Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzuraAutomation.com and welcome to the advanced series of SpecFlow. And in this video, I'll be talking about dependency injection and how we can leverage the power of SpecFlow's dependency injections. Dependency injection is a programming technique that makes a class independent of its dependencies. It achieves that by decoupling the usage of an object from its creation. And the concept is the inversion of control. And the inversion of control is considered as a programming style used to invert the flow of control. You can actually learn a lot more detail about the inversion of control or IOC and the dependency injection by going to the dependency injection ASP.NET Core of Microsoft Talk and you can understand a lot more detail. But in this video, I'm actually going to show you some of the benefits and how we can use DI or dependency injection in our automation world. So what is the benefit of DI itself? It helps in unit testing a lot which we don't really care as a tester, but we really need to care while we are going to be writing our test codes. The boilerplate codes is reduced as initializing of dependency is done by the injector components. If you don't really get this part, I'm going to be explaining that as a separate slide in this particular video. And using DI, we can extend the application and the test code much, much easily. And DI helps to enable loose coupling, which is important in the application programming. And that's what is the power of the DI. We can easily achieve all these operations. The next question naturally comes is where do we use it in our automation testing? We can use DI in Selenium web driver, library utility classes, database repository classes, even for the page object model class and in specflow while we try to pass the data between uh, steps in the different classes we can use DI. So DI can be used in almost all the places in our automation code which is pretty much like a best practice pattern that we can use to avoid the boilerplate code, increase the readability of the code, maintainability of the code and make our test code more to be like a separation of concern code because we don't really have to worry about the ceremonies to be there while writing the test to initialize the web driver object or something like that. And DI in the spec flow helps reduce significant boilerplate codes, which I'm keep telling. And that's what I really mean over here. For example, all these days, if we wanted to initialize a web driver object, we might probably do it within a constructor or within a method, something like this. As you can see over here, we have a driver fixer class where it is going to be initializing the web driver. And in order to initialize the web driver, we may probably require a settings to be passed, which is basically going to be the URL of the application itself. So as you can see, I'm actually creating two concrete classes here. One is the settings class and the other one is the driver fixture class. And these two are basically a concrete class or we are actually calling the actual class itself using the new keyword here. And because the driver fixer requires the setting, I actually have to resolve this object even before calling this driver fixer so that we could able to use this driver fixer to call our web driver instance. And that's exactly what is going to be a problem if you're going to have multiple different classes and if you're going to be calling all these concrete classes with a new keyword because you are actually calling the object initialization over here. And with DI, the code is going to look something like this. As you can see, I have not even passed the settings here and I have not even called the driver fixer class, which is the concrete class. Rather, I have called the interface of the driver fixture, which is like an abstract interface and doesn't have the concrete class implementation over here. It's just a definition. And this way you can see the number of lines of code has been reduced tremendously. So using concrete classes poses a lot of challenges. We may end up solving dependencies of all these concrete classes while we may not even require them to do so. And that's what we are going to see as a demo in this particular video. But once again, dependency injection in specflow, there are so many different DI containers available in specflow itself. Something like specflow.autofac, specflow.dependency injection, specflow.microsoft dependency injection, and specflow.winster. We are going to see one of the DI container, which is going to be the specflow.dependency injection in this particular video. Let's quickly see a demo and understand how things work. As you can see in this particular project, I have a login.feature file and this is going to perform a simple login operation. It is going to navigate to the EA app and it's going to click the login button and it's going to enter the username and password. And the step definition implementation actually has got two classes, but we are actually going to see 
the one without the di or the dependency injection itself as you can see this particular class is going to call the driver fixture this is the one that we saw on the slide before so if you go to the driver fixture implementation you can see that this driver fixture actually has got a settings to be taken as a parameter and it's going to call the get web driver which is then going to be calling the web driver initialization itself and as you can see this web driver initialization is going to call the chrome driver initialization and then once the initialization is done it is going to be navigating to the application itself that's a very very super simple code and it also has an interface which we are actually going to see while we talk about the dependency injection but for now let's just talk about the concrete class and as you can see it also has a concrete class of settings class and if we go to the support of the settings.cs file you can see it has a very simple uri application url and coming back to the step definition once again as you can see it actually is going to be initializing all the driver fixture as well as the settings with a new keyword so that it could resolve the object and then it could perform the operation something like this as you can see it's going to perform the driver fixer dot driver dot find element to perform the finding of the element performing the operation in the ui so let's see how it actually works so when i try running this code you can see that it is going to be actually opening a browser for us and then it is going to perform the ui operation as expected which is great so this is the code without di and this is the one that we might have used so many times within our projects and within our coding practices and now let's talk about the di itself and as i told you before i have actually installed the specflow dot dependency injection which is this package and it is available under solid token dot specflow dot dependency injection and once i install this dependency injection all i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here on this calculator step definition without the dependency injection comment this code and i'm gonna uncomment this code over here and as you can see the code of the step definition implementation is pretty much exactly the same the only place which is going to be changing is going to be on the constructor side as you can see instead of the driver fixer concrete class i'm calling the i driver fixer interface and this interface is the one which is going to be doing the magics for us it is going to be a abstract interface and if you go to this particular interface all it has is the declaration of the driver which is nothing but the one which has been initialized over here on the concrete class that is the only information it has got it has got nothing other than that and once i get this information i then perform the rest of the operation but where is this initialization itself is happening like how it happened in the concrete class well it's all happening in this particular startup.cs file and as you can see this class is going to have a method called as create service which is going to have the scenario dependencies attribute decorated and this is one which is going to be coming from the solid token.specflow.dependency injection plugin that we just installed and as you can see it is actually creating the di container where it is going to perform the same kind of operation it is actually doing singleton of the settings being initialized which is done pretty much in our code without the di as you can see over here and then it is also going to do an add scope of the i driver fixture of the driver fixture so basically if you're going to call the i driver fixture it is going to resolve the driver fixture for you over here so you don't really have to worry about the concrete class implementation and once this objects are resolved in this startup class file all you're going to do is just call the code in the calculator step definitions and perform the rest of the operation. And if I try executing this code, this is going to do exactly the same kind of operation that we just saw on the one without the DI. So it is performing the login operation, entering the username and password, and the code is executed successfully. And that's the power of the DI in automation testing. And there are even more information available in the specflows example as you can see over here. You can find a lot more detail of the example about the .NET 6, Selenium example, additional step assemblies, async await examples and lot more details. So all these informations are available in the specflow examples repository so you can find all these details. You can learn more about the dependency injection from the website as I was talking about. Just search for diasp.net and you will end up into this particular website and this website is even more detailed about the dependency injection and how you can use it 
within your application development and the same can be applied within the automation testing world so that's it guys this is about the di and i hope you understand what di and how to use it within the automation testing world thank you